Thank you, everyone. Start with a short story. It was 10 a.m. on a Friday morning in sunny San Jose. And I was busy. I was busy doing my work, very focused. And my four-year-old was having fun with a Formula One race in the background, right? But I was very focused. I said, okay. And it's like a white noise. Like if your parents say out here, you know like how it is, right? So it was like a white noise for me. And I was working on this uh, thing. Okay. This uh, very interesting project, right? And uh, this is like a Google autocompletes when people search for Reddit. So like most of you, I'm curious about certain data sets. And here I was looking, okay, what are people searching for on Google for Reddit? And I was creating this uh, kind of a tree graph, right? So you see when people search for Reddit, there are these different questions, are, can, how, what, where, which, who, will. And uh, then you see like a tree forming. So are Reddit awards anonymous, all these different types of questions. And I was focused, I was scratching my head like what's going on? But at the background, that was my four-year-old son. He was having lots of fun. And the white noise suddenly stopped. And he was speaking at my visualization. And he said, Abu. Abu means dad in our language. And he calls me Abu. He says, Abu, this looks like dome of a mosque. I said, really? I thought like uh, maybe he was talking about uh, a Lego piece or uh, something in his hand. So I looked back and he was pointing at my screen. This looks like dome of a mosque. And I said, how? So I tilted my head and uh, it does look like dome of a mosque. So very refreshing, right? So my name is Gulrez Khan, and uh, I created this uh, slide five years back, and then I keep adding more things to it. But this is how my career started. Uh, 2005, started my career, moved to Seattle, uh, worked in Microsoft for a decade, and uh, now working at PayPal as a data science leader. Recently, I wrote this book, Drawing Data with Kids. I'm father of three kids and uh, spend a lot of time with uh, them. Raise your hand if you have, anyone of you have seen this video. Okay, most of you. <laughs> so, let's see. So with COVID, what happened is our work life and our personal life, they became together, right? And our kids became a regular visitor in our office, right? Most of my uh, uh, colleagues know my kids, and my kids, they know my colleagues. Uh, they would say, I can do your work. You just say, hey, Ruben, how are you? And uh, he will say, I'm good. And you'll say, I'm good as well, right? So this is what I would uh, talk. Uh, but then, like, uh, having spent more time with the kids, I thought, OK, uh, and being passionate about data, like, uh, I couldn't resist bringing data home. And, uh, like, uh, I was talking about this timeline for uh, my uh, professional life. And then there is also our personal uh, timeline, right? So I have uh, three kids, and uh, I was doing lots of activities with them, right? So I used to do these uh, uh, activities called drawing, just drawing. And they would uh, treat me very well. Like, they'll bring those crayons and then color pencils and papers, and they would, they would just say, okay, draw something. And I'm not teaching them. I'm just having fun. I say, okay, no one gives uh, gives me so takes me so. Uh, I mean, I'm not getting the right word, uh, but like uh, I was treated royally, right? And I said, okay, I was having fun. And then suddenly I said, okay, why don't I add data to that, right? So while my two kids, uh, three and five, were too young, I've got an 11 year old daughter, and I, th I thought I'll use her as a guinea pig. And then I started uh, using, uh, talking to her about uh, data. But then my wife, right? So I said, okay, 
I want to teach them data visualization. You know, data is everywhere. Like uh, this is your uh, data. Uh, the world is changing, and everywhere the data is around. But she said, no, she is very mindful. We don't have a television at home. She said, I don't want screen. I want to reduce the screen time. I said, OK, all right. So that's where like, uh, we compromised. And uh, we said, OK, it has to be a mix of uh, sc uh, data visualization without any screen time. And we are big on storytelling. So stories are very powerful. I do that at my workspace uh, uh, in office. And people engage like anything. And it works with my kids. So, so that's how like uh, drawing data with kids came into being. And uh, I started doing some certain activities with them, right? So here, like just writing down the name of the different months and then counting the number of letters in these different uh, months and just having some fun, right? We were playing like uh, board games. So my daughter, 11-year-old daughter, Parisa, uh, she has this book, Dear Data. Uh, so she's looking into that, and then looking into that, like she created this uh, uh, whiz, right? So I said, okay, that's uh, fun. We played Scrabble, right? So Scrabble, using data in your daily life, right? Now she lost a game of Scrabble. Now she's scratching her head and then saying, okay, I lost it. Why did I lose it? Now she's interested to learn about data. She's interested to dive into that. Instead of that, if I brought a different data set, let's say some sales data or something, she wouldn't enjoy that as much. Similar to that, different uh, other activities we did. So that's what like uh, turned into this uh, thing called drawing data with kids. That's where like I'm kind of capturing these different things. Every chapter has, starts with a story, and it's a realistic fiction. It uh, gives a little bit about me and my family, how we uh, do different things, and uh, Every story, like I have got this section also called a timeout section, where I'm introducing a different type of a graph, right? So that's where like uh, kids are learning about it. And at the end of the chapter, there is this uh, take home activity. <clears throat> so the idea is not to teach them, but to make them fall in love with data. And I'd like to add, share a little story over here, right? So. Uh, my 11-year-old daughter, like, uh, she was sitting on the sofa the other day, and I was finishing up my call at work, and she calls me, hey, Abu, come here. And I said, okay. I went there, and she was reading a book. So the book was called The Birds of North America. And uh, I said, okay, what's interesting? And she showed me a graph. The graph was, uh, the previous session was about sound, and so this was like uh, identifying the species of birds based on the pitch of uh, the birds. And she w it was a complicated uh, visualization, complicated graph. And I was scratching my head, looking into it, what is it, and wh why she is into it. And she said, this looks like a snore graph from your book. So we have a, a graph that I created, which is like snoring. right? Now I give a pat on my back that, uh, hey, she is not intimidated by data. That's the whole purpose of this book, right? So there are lots of adults we have seen who looks into some math equations, or whenever data comes into their life, they just want to turn that page and move forward, right? So that's what we want to do here in this book. I didn't want to cover this uh, different types of graphs, like what data is, what are different data types, but stories, have fun. And then people remember. And as a parent, like, or uh, even adults, like if you want to just uh, look into this data or these chapters, you'll have fun memories, right? So that's what we, I want to create with this uh, book. And uh, yeah, so let's get them into data, screen free. And these are like uh, one of the pictures that we have of doing our stuff together. Now I work as a data science leader. When I was training as a data for data science, I came and I looked into the data set. And the first data set that came in f to my hand was this iris flower, beautiful, right? I never heard of this flower in my life, right? So I come from India, and, I, and then I cannot pronounce these different varieties. Vir, vir, virginica, right? Versicolor, right? So it's very hard for me to even pronounce these things. Now, when I think of learning a new subject with this domain which I don't understand, it makes it more complicated, right? 
So that's why like when I thought of uh, teaching it to my kids, I thought I want to make it very easy, right? So here like chocolates, everyone loves chocolates. And then counting the number of letters, you're introducing a graph. Uh, and then stacked graph, right? Consonant, vowels. Every child, like when they are learning about these things, why don't we add graphs as well, right? When they learn about these numbers and other things, uh, board games, right? So here you see the different rounds. You see like uh, how it is changing. And uh, then you add that uh, cumulative score, right? So this is like from the book, like one of the game, and this is like a realistic uh, g fiction, as I said, like I have, we were playing a game uh, as a family, and you see like uh, at a particular round, the younger brother, like uh, he just moved, he got this triple tile, right? And now like when the fam whole family looks into the graph, they said, oh yes, this is what happened. And they are analyzing that data and having fun. Some rhymes, right? Wheels on the bus go round, round, round. Shapes and letters, pictograms. And this is like, a, like I'm like very thankful to Data Visualization Society. This came like from one of brainstorming, like my daughter came in and she said, hey, I heard about this elephant and it weighs equivalent to 150 men's weight. And I posted like, how do I explain it? And then people provided different examples. And I said, okay, based on that feedback, I created this thing and she, she enjoyed that. And we talk about pictograms, heat maps, right? This heat map is created based on number of letters in each state. You know which are the red state here. Physical visualization. So we have uh, uh, in San Jose, actually in Fremont now, um, I have this uh, cherry blossom trees in our background and we were playing around it and then like uh, we want to see okay where this uh, flower would be, like what are the popular location so you don't have to teach them, right? So you just put that flower uh, on the map and you say, okay, these are different places where you can find cherry blossom uh, fl flowers. And my four-year-old son, like uh, he's now six, like it's been two years, uh, he came to me the other day. He said, Abu, we should cut uh, some grass and put it on the map and it will show like which parts of US is greener than the others. Like again, pat on my back <laughs> that it's uh, <laughs> helping. So what worked? Stories, like uh, no standard curriculum, charts uh, with stories, and uh, exercises, right? But again, what didn't work? Like some of people ask, like, uh, what, do you, what didn't work for you? What didn't work for me is like, I started doing these things, and then I said uh, to my daughter that, uh, go and do this thing. And she wouldn't do it. She was doing it because as a dad, I was involved, and uh, we were all having fun. But if you give them, then like it's like uh, taking stress on them, right? So you avoid that. Don't try to teach them. Just have some fun memories that they can take with them. And uh, parent-child bonding, right? So here, without any screen, you don't have to open Excel. I see a lot of parents sending their kids to learn Python these days, right? Or some other activities. But as a family, on a weekend, just uh, sit and do those things. On a flight, like you read certain things and do those activities, right? So main takeaway, uh, the idea is not to teach them, but to make them fall in love with data visualization. And uh, I think I can play this video. Okay. There's also a sound here, but I think that's fine. So here I've tried to use those different uh, comic uh, sense uh, phones and those uh, sketches so that uh, kids don't feel bored with that. So here you see like there are, there's a story, there's a snore graph, and then like uh, at the end of the chapter there are certain exercises, right? So there is this, sneeze graph or meow meow graph, a roar graph, right? So kids can do those kind of activities. Uh, so, so, so that's that. But again, like as I said, uh, it has been a very fulfilling project. 
and uh, the and then like when i was doing it like it was that uh, if nothing works it works as memories right for me and my kids that we did certain things together and thankfully like it's been very well received and uh, i'm on to like create it as a series for more such books so thank you everyone